Ansible is a great tool for automation, but sometimes it needs access to sensitive information. For instance, maybe a task needs user credentials to access a computer, or it needs to upload a configuration file containing sensitive information. Either way, it's not good to store details like this in plain view. Fortunately, Ansible allows you to create Ansible vaults, basically encrypted files to store information in. But how do you create and manage Ansible vaults? How can you configure Ansible to use one? Well, if that's something that you're interested in finding out, then stick around and watch this video, as that's what we'll be going over. Now, before we even get started making any Ansible vaults, the first thing I'm going to do is to change the default text editor, because personally, I prefer to use Nano. To do that, what I'm going to do is just edit the configuration file for Bash, which is in my home folder. And I'm going to go right to the end of this file. And I'm going to copy and paste in an extra line, which is basically to tell it to use Nano. Save that file. Now, rather than exit out of this terminal session and then go back in again, what I can do is just run this command to get the change to take effect immediately. So just hit return. And there we go. Now should be able to use Nano instead of Vi for our default text editor. Now what we're going to be doing in this demo is to create a vault which contains some variables that our playbook can use. But before I create the vault itself, I need to create some folders first. So I'm going to create one called group underscore var. So this is an actual folder that Ansible looks for when it's going through your inventory and looking for variables. Within there, I'm going to then create another folder which is called PVE nodes. Now this is actually the name of a group of hosts that I've defined within the inventory file. Then I'm going to create the actual vault itself. Now there's different ways you can do this, but I'm just going to do it all in one go. I'm actually going to create the file and encrypt it all at the same time. To do that, we use the ansible-vault command. We then go with the create option to create a new vault. And then we point it to the actual file that we want to create. So we've got our group underscore vars folder within there. We've got PVE nodes. And then the name of the actual vault is going to be called, well, we're just going to call it vault. Hit return. And it's asking for an actual password to encrypt this file with. And as you can see, we're now in Nano because I've changed the default text editor. I'm then going to copy and paste in the actual details of these variables. So for me, these are to do with API connectivity to uh, Proxmox VE, sensitive information, which makes a lot of sense as to why you'd want to put them in an encrypted vault. So now I've done those, I'm just going to save the file. And just to show you, if we actually just look at the file itself using the cat command, all we've got now is just a, basically a bunch of numbers, some details about it, including the encryption that's used. But essentially now what we've got is a vault. In other words, we've got our variables inside of a file. And all of that's now been encrypted. Now, another goal here is for Ansible to be able to get access to an encrypted file containing sensitive information. There might be times where you actually want to have a look at the contents of that vault. And to do that, you'll use the ansible vault command. So I'm just going to copy and paste in the details of the command as I need it. So ansible vault, then we use the view option, and then we just point it to the actual vault file itself. Hit return, and it asks for the password. So I'll just put that in, hit return, and then you can see we've got our actual details back. So it shows them all in an unencrypted format. But just to demonstrate, it's not actually decrypting that file and leaving it in an unencrypted state. Because if I use the cat command, all we've got is a bunch of numbers again. So yes, it does decrypt it in the background so that you can actually see that in the output. But the file itself is staying intact. It's still encrypted. Now, at some point in time, you're probably going to want to change the contents of the vault. And to do that, we'll use the Ansible vault command. So I'm just going to copy and paste in the line that I need. So we're using Ansible dash vault. And then we're selecting the edit option to edit the existing vault. And then just pointing it to that vault. I then need to put in 
my password for the vault. As you can see, we're now in Nano. And what I can do is to make changes to the existing content. But what I'm going to do is just to download, so I'm just going to add another line, save those changes. Now, if we have a look at that file using the cat command, as you can see, it still remains encrypted. If we go back into Nano again, edit this file, just give it my password. There's our extra line. Now, that was just a demo. I don't really need that. So I'm actually just going to take that line out anyway. But as you can see, you can actually edit an existing vault. Now, if for some reason you ever do need to decrypt an actual vault file, you can actually do that. So to decrypt this vault that I've got, I'm just going to copy and paste in the command. So we're using ansible-vault, and then we're selecting the option decrypt and pointing it to our vault file. I'm going to hit return. And I need to put my password in. And then it, all it does is just comes back and tells you that the actual decryption is successful. But if I use the cat command to have a look at the file, instead of getting all of those numbers and being told what the actual algorithm is, we've now actually got a decrypted file. In other words, we've now got a file which is just in plain text. Now, although I showed how you can create a vault and encrypt it all in one command, you can also create a vault by encrypting an existing file. So to do that, we're going to use the Ansible Vault command again. But this time we're going to use the encrypt option and then point it to our actual file, which we just recently decrypted. So I'm going to hit return. And now it's going to ask for the password. So I'll type that in and then I'll confirm that. Now it's just coming back and telling us that that's actually successful. So if I want to have a look at this file using the cat command, you can see that this file is now encrypted. Now there may be a situation in which you need to change the password on a vault, although in fact it's actually recommended that you do actually change this regularly anyway. But to change the actual password for your vault, what you need to do is to use the read key option. So I'm just going to paste in the actual command to change uh, the actual password for the vault that I've created. So we're using ansible-vault, then the read key option and pointing it to our vault. It wants to know what the existing password is. Then it wants to know what's the new password. So I'll put that in. Then it wants me to confirm that. And there you go. It just comes back and says read key is successful. But just to demonstrate that this file is still encrypted, we'll use the cat command to have a look at it. So there, it's just all of our numbers and some information for Ansible itself, basically. But we've still got an encrypted file, except now the actual password to gain access to it has changed. Now what we've done is to basically create a file which has got some variables in it, but we've encrypted it. And in order to use those, we actually have to tell our playbook about them. So to do that, what I'm going to do is to actually edit a playbook that I was using in a previous video to basically just create a basic virtual machine uh, on a Proxmox VE node. Now, these three lines here are already referenced within our vault. So what I'm going to do is take these three lines out and then I'm going to replace them by putting in variables instead of the actual information. So when it comes to the actual user, I'm referencing the actual variable that I created within the vault called API underscore user. And I'm doing the same for the token ID and the actual secret for that token. Now, one thing to point out is that because we're using variables, we have to reference them by putting them within these curly brackets. We're dealing with strings, so that's why I've got the quotes as well around them. But now that we've got the playbook referencing actual variables instead of actual values, what it means is that this gives us a bit more security because if anybody sees this actual playbook, well, there's nothing in those lines to tell anybody what the user account is, uh, what the actual uh, token ID is, or what the actual secret for it is. It's all um, hidden away, basically. 
Instead, that information is within an encrypted file, our vault file. So that makes the whole process a lot more secure. So I'm going to save this file. Now, one thing I'll point out is if we have a look at my inventory file, you'll see there I've got a group called PVE nodes, and that's basically all I need to do because I've created a folder called group underscore vars where Ansible is going to go looking for actual variables because I've then created a subfolder in there called PVE nodes. It'll be able to know that when it's looking for variables for any of these uh, actual computers in that group, it can get them from that specific vault file that we've created. In any case, to actually use this playbook now, I need to actually tell it what the password is. So I haven't updated my ansible.cfg file. So I'm still running the ansible-playbook command, pointing it to the playbook itself. I'm telling it where the inventory file is with the dash I option, telling it what the user is with the dash dash user option, telling it where to find my private key with dash dash private dash key. And then right at the end, I've got dash dash ask dash vault dash password here to prompt me for the actual password for that vault. Hit return, bring my password, and then it should now pull that information from the actual uh, vault. And there you go. It's gone off and it's now actually created my virtual machine. So the big change here is really the fact that that information is now essentially obscured from anybody who just looks at the playbook. So that's great, for example, if you've got like a third party uh, who's helping you troubleshoot uh, a playbook or if these sort of files end up in say like a Git repository. Now at the moment, we've got a bit of a problem if we actually want to schedule our playbooks because in order for Ansible to get access to the contents of the vault, it needs a password and that's going to require interaction. To get around that, what we can do is to create what's known as a password file. Just bear in mind, this is a plain text file containing an actual password. And for that reason, you actually want to be very careful in terms of where the actual file is placed and also who has access to it. So for that reason, I've created a new folder called Ansible and I've put all of the actual files uh, to do with Ansible into this folder. That way, what I can do is to actually create a password file and place it into, say, the home folder of this Ansible user account. I'm going to use the echo command to basically put that password into a new file called .myvaultkey in the home folder. By using the dot in front of the name, at least the file is hidden. So at least it keeps it away from uh, anybody who's not that particularly uh, savvy when it comes to Linux. Although, as ever, I would strongly suggest using something a lot less uh, obvious and a lot more complicated than the sort of passwords I use in demos, but I just want to keep things as simple as possible. So that's going into the home folder. So at least it's separate from the actual Ansible files itself. So even if we set this up to upload all of these Ansible files into Git, at least it won't take the actual uh, password file with it. And I can at least go one step further in terms of security by restricting access uh, just to the owner using chmod. Now, one thing to bear in mind is that Ansible needs access to this file. And the way I've got this set up is that I'm basically running all of my actual playbooks using this Ansible user account. So for me, that's fine. But if you log in with one particular user account, but Ansible is going to be run using a different account, you've got to make sure that Ansible does get um, access to your actual file here. In any case, We've now actually got a file, but as I say, if we have a look at that, that actual file, it is in plain text, but it's a bit of a paradox because, well, Ansible does need access to an encrypted file, but it needs a password, and I certainly can't put a password on that file uh, to be able to do that. So, yeah, we've got to bend the security a bit. So at least we've taken um, some steps to make it harder to get access to that file. Well, now that we've got a password file, instead of having to go through the prompt process to supply Ansible with a password to get access to the vault, instead we can point it to our password file. So let's say, for example, we want to view the contents of our vault. I can run a command like this. So Ansible-vault, then view, then we point it to where the actual vault file is, then dash-vault, 
dash password dash file and we point it to where the password file is hit return and sure enough it comes back with the contents and likewise if i actually want to run playbook we're going to run a command like this so ansible dash playbook tell it uh, the, the actual playbook to run point it to where the inventory file is tell it what user account to use what private key to use then dash dash vault dash password dash file and we point it to the actual password file hit return and off it goes in this case this virtual machine already exists so there was no point in actually recreating it but the key point is that this is a sort of command you can then put into a scheduled job because it doesn't really need any interaction now Ansible does allow you to set default settings and that includes telling it where to find an actual password file so what I'm going to do is edit the ansible.cfg file in this local folder it already has some settings so I'm just going to add an extra line here which is vault underscore password underscore file equals and then the path to that password file that we've got so I'll save that and now what I can do is to run my actual playbook but I don't have to mention where the actual password file is because it can get the information from the Ansible CFG file so off it goes in this case it's going to create a virtual machine or as it turns out it actually already exists so it hasn't had to do anything the only problem I see with this approach is that well it's blatantly obvious that it's saying we've got a vault password file and it's telling uh, whoever looks at this file exactly where it is now let's say we're using git and we're uploading all of the contents plus the subfolders uh, to a public git repository well that'll take the ansible.cfg file with it unless you specifically ignore it so that is one approach but what i'm going to do is to actually move this file to my home folder instead the only thing to point out is that as far as ansible is concerned if you've got an ansible cfg file in your home folder it has to be a hidden file so that's why i'm renaming it uh, to dot ansible.cfg and then while i'm here i'm just going to change the permissions for good measure so now we can still run our playbook but this time the actual config file is in the home folder so it's going to look to the home folder for a file it's going to look to the local folder for a file in this case it's found the one in the home folder so it's using that and this is where we have a slight problem in it if you place an ansible cfg file in this actual local folder it's going to take precedence and ansible isn't sophisticated enough to pull some information from one file and some information from another so in this particular approach what we'd have to do is have our default settings in the one in the home folder if we then want to have more specific settings within a project for example say we've got a project with a vault and it's got a different password what we more likely have to do is override uh, the default settings uh, in the actual command line when we're actually running a playbook to tell us well actually use this password file instead but either way i do quite like this approach especially as now what we've got is a means to set up vaults to put sensitive information in and we can run our playbooks at some scheduled time unattended now if you find this video to be useful then do consider subscribing to the channel as that would really mean a lot to me but it's also a good indicator to let me know how videos like this are helpful to people such as yourselves that are watching in which case thank you on the other hand if you're not ready for that level of commitment then i'd really appreciate it if you could press the like button because that way that will help to get the video out to other people that might find it useful as well